Man, I miss the good old days of Yu-Gi-Oh. You guys remember all those old school cards from 2002, 2003? You guys remember Pot of Greed? My favorite card, Morphing Jar, number two. Great long nose. Fucking nasty ass motherfucker, that's nasty man! <laughs> Today we're going retro, we're going to be playing in an old school format tournament. No hand traps, no link monsters, no synchro, no Xyz, and especially no pendulum. Oh, hell no, man, what the fuck? But before we start, I just want to announce the giveaway winner. Here's the uh, giveaway winner from the last video. Uh, please email me if you've won, and I will send you your prize. Uh, and also a screenshot of your YouTube channel. This giveaway, we're giving away another mommy, Melfi Mommy from OTS Pack 15, super rare. And we're also giving away a first edition Invasion of Chaos, uh, Chaos Sorcerers. If you want to participate in the giveaway, please give a like, uh, be a subscriber to the channel. We're almost at 100 subscribers already, which is great. And leave a comment about something Yu-Gi-Oh related. I don't know. <laughs> uh, if we get to 100 subscribers by the next video, I'll do something special. I'll do a special little giveaway because I uh, appreciate you guys. And let's go ahead and get started. It's a beautiful night to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh. We're back at Waifu Next Door Collectibles playing four rounds of Swiss and a 14-man tourney. And I'd say it'd be an understatement to say that everyone is very excited for this nostalgic tournament to take place. All right, we got Rob. What's up, everybody? We're gonna start with the speed duel pack, you know, some uh, original. We got the Gravekeeper. Frank might like that. We got the Ritual. You can't really ask for much more. Oh shit! What is that? Honestly, if I saw that damn thing in my living room, I'd stomp on it until it was a small brown stain. And I got an insect. Oh, insect hey, card. Oh, well. Dang. Kevin's gonna pull another Zeus. You must record this precious moment. <laughs> I won my Ecclesia. <gasps> oh, he just pulled up. <laughs> Adam, if you want the Zeus? <laughs> I put another one. <laughs> this guy, Jesus Christ. Hey, shout out to David for giving me this one. Hell yeah. Oh my god, he's showing it off. <laughs> You're making me sweat all over the place. Alright, first round. First round we got against Rob. This is like our first time ever playing GOAT. For me, at least. Yeah, I mean, I don't often play GOAT, but here we are. We're excited to be here on a nice Saturday evening. Yeah. Ah, man, I just love these old school classic cards. Makes me feel like a kid again. I set my entire hand face down in the first turn and pass it over to Rob. Rob starts his turn off by playing Nobleman of Crossout, which targets and banishes a face down monster. And unfortunately, since my monster was a Sangan and it was banished instead of being sent to the grave, I'm unable to activate the effect to add a monster to my hand, unfortunately. Rob summons the Shining Angel on attack mode, to which I then activate my first trap card called Gravity Bind, preventing all level 4 or lower monsters from attacking. A few turns go by, and Rob Tribute Summons to summon out Grand Mark, the Rock Monarch, which when Tribute Summoned successfully can destroy one of my face down traps. To stop this, I chain Solemn Judgment to negate the summon by giving up half of my life points to save my Nightmare Will from being destroyed. Rob later then summons Bazu the Soul Eater, which ends up being a primary target for my Nightmare Will to latch onto. Nightmare Will is a trap card that attaches onto a monster, preventing the monster from attacking and during every one of my standby phases, Rob takes 500 damage. In my turn, I pick up a monster and set it in face down defense position. Rob summons out Sangan in attack mode, and since it's a level 3, it's able to attack my face down card. So Rob attacks, and unfortunately for Rob, he attacked right into my stealth bird with 1700 defense. The stealth bird allows me to reset it in face down defense, and every time I flip summon it, Rob takes 1000 damage. So I do just that in the next turn. If you haven't figured out my strategy yet, I am playing the best strategy in GOAT format. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking. Cam, do you really think it's fun to just play a deck that stalls for time and, and wins off of cheesing your opponent into not being able to play the game and then just winning off of effect damage? <laughs> to be honest though, I didn't really want to spend a lot of money making goat decks, so when I was going through my bulk, I just kind of found a majority of the cards I needed to make a burn deck, so... So yeah, I'm playing burn deck, and it's actually working kind of nice. I end up taking the first victory against Rob, and we move on to the next game. In the next game, I'm able to replicate kind of what I did in the first game. I play a floodgate called level limit area B, which makes it so all level 4 or higher monsters are automatically changed to defense position, and place the stealth bird in defense. Rob leads off his turn by playing snatch deal, which takes my monster, like... Like, like he just takes it, like I don't, I don't really get it back. Uh, he activates my Stealth Bird against me, and then tributes into Thestalos the Fire Monarch. 
When Thestalos is summoned, Rob can discard a random card from my hand to the grave, and then I take damage equal to its level times 100. So my second Stealth Bird gets sent to the grave. I set a card in defense mode. And next turn, Rob summons out Breaker the Magical Warrior, destroying my level limit spell card, leaving me now open for an attack. So my strategy is starting to break down a bit, but fear not. The card that I had face down is my absolute savior, and arguably my favorite card in the whole game. Cyberjar. When Cyberjar is flipped face up, all monsters get destroyed, and then we each get to pick up five cards and special summon monsters to the field and add the rest to our hands. I set Sinister Serpent to the field and add a bunch of really good spells and traps to my hand. From here, I'm able to just kind of be able to gain the advantage. Uh, I have all the cards I need in my hand, and I have Solemn Judgment in case Rob is able to use some sort of back row disruption, like he does here where he brings out uh, Mobius the Frost Monarch, and I just destroy that. So yeah, from, from here I just pretty much win. It's always a pleasure to play against Rob. He's probably one of the nicest guys that comes out to play. Um, all, overall, just a, a really great dude. Uh, so we take the win for this round, and we are about to go get started with the second round. Don't let you down, Deck. Oh. Same here. Oh, God damn. <laughs> trough, say, trough hey, is. Hey. Oh my God. I've never seen something so beautiful, so unbelievably toxic and degenerate. So yeah, I mean, I first delinquent duo of him, which basically just says, sorry, you don't have five cards anymore, you have three. And then I get my two wave motion cannons, and two solemn judgments, and a magic cylinder. There's no way I'm losing. Opponent summons Blade Knight, attacks, oops, uh, magic cylinder, redirect the damage back at you, 2,000 damage. Oh, what's this, uh, Pot of Greed, draw two. Oh, hey, would you look at that, uh, Swords are Revealing Light, and, uh, now you can't attack me. Oh, you summon Breaker, solemn judgment, GG. Your little pussy belongs to me. I honestly felt kind of bad going into this match. Like, I just had crazy luck, honestly, and any efforts that my opponent made were just immediately shut down. Even in the second game, I just stalled him out and then threw down a big Lava Golem, and then he pretty much just said, screw it, you know what? I activate Ring of Destruction on Lava Golem and kill myself. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, we won 2 -0. so now we're 2-0 now. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't feel good about it, but at the same time, I kind of do. But yeah. All right, we just finished up round two. I feel like such a dirty, dirty little man. We've just been getting the good cards and they've just been getting the bad cards. Uh, that first that first game, this uh, round two, opened up two uh, Solemn Judgment, two Wave Motion. I was like, I am like, I am so sorry, Juan, for like what I'm about to do to you right now. Yeah, I don't know, like, <laughs> I'm actually surprised we've actually won two games so far. We just uh, been kind of finessing our way through it so far, so uh, we'll see how we go next round. <laughs> Uh oh. Boss battle. Boss fight. I guess, yeah. Depends on how well I do it. I do it burn. Third round, we get paired against James. Up until this point in time, I had never taken a match against James, so I wasn't expecting to perform too well, especially after he opens with Delinquent Duo, making me send my Dust Tornado as well as my Ceasefire to the grave. The game overall was pretty grindy, but nonetheless we were able to take the win for this first game, even after an unfavorable start. Second game we get a pretty decent starting hand, but James decided to sign in Royal Decree, which negates all trap cards on the field, and- wait. Negates all trap cards on the field? Uh oh, bro, like a third of my deck is trap cards. This is not good. I need to get rid of this trap card somehow. Um, the only card in my deck that could save me now is Mystical Space Typhoon. I set my Morphing Jar face down and hopefully by using its effect to draw five new cards during James's turn, I will be able to draw the card I need in order to destroy that trap card. So he attacks and its effect goes off, but I'm just thinking, but I don't know. I, I don't know if I can do it. The, the odds of pulling it, there's, there's no way I'll be able to draw it. Wait, what's that? Can the duelist? <gasps> Yami Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh! No way. Don't give up just yet. You need to believe in the heart of the cards. I, I, I don't know, Yugi. What, do you really think I have what it takes to believe in the heart of the cards? You are a great duelist, Cam. Trust me. I have faith that if you believe in yourself and in your deck, you will be able to muster up enough strength to be able to draw the cards you need in order to win this duel. Now fulfill your destiny! Oh shit! 
what the fuck? When this happened, I couldn't help but just laugh internally. Like, this interaction was just so funny to me that I had to include it. So yeah, I pretty much lost after that. You know, not being able to use my traps puts me at a pretty huge disadvantage. So I scoop and I moved to game three. Game three was kind of interesting. I had a bunch of face down spells and traps, and then James activates Raigeki Break, targeting and destroying my Solemn Judgment. And then he thinks, oh nice, now I can activate my Royal Decree. And I'm just like, nope, here's another here's another Solemn Judgment. So I free reign to use my cards in this game, but James keeps destroying my spells and traps the other means. He fusion summons into Millennium Ice Restricts and steals my Morphing Jar, and then tribute summons it to bring out the Frost Monarch, and destroys my Wave Motion Cannon as well as my Rivalry of Warlords. So I'm running kind of low on resources, but I'm able to give him a Lava Golem and set up a Gravity Bind, but then he just activates Book of Moon to flip my Lava Golem face down so he doesn't take the damage, and then beats me with a bunch of other big monsters when he's able to, and then I lose. So unfortunately we lost against James again, and we are now 2-1. Fourth round we're going up against Amen, who I got bodied by both games. He pretty much played the exact same deck as James, so there isn't anything too different to cover. The second game was really close, I was about to send my Wave Motion Cannon to the Grave with 5 counters on it in the main phase to deal 5,000 points of damage and win but in my standby phase, Eamon activates a Ring of Destruction and destroys his Vampire Lord when I had only 1700 life points left. Turns out he drew it and then set it in the previous turn, so it came in clutch for him at the very end. I ended up losing this match and finished the night going 2-2. Overall, it was a really fun time. Uh, first time ever playing GOAT format, and I hope I can participate in something like this again soon. That's the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you want to enter the giveaway, just leave a comment about something Yu-Gi-Oh! related. By the time you guys are seeing this video, I will be away on a trip, so I won't be returning until August 5th. Uh, until then, I hope everyone's having a great summer so far. Can't wait to show you guys what's coming up next. Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.